I'm Adobe Developer Evangelist Kevin Hoyt. Now, in this series, we've been exploring how to get started with HTML5 Canvas. We've covered a lot of ground so far, including, including everything from colors and styles to uh, interactivity uh, to using images. And now we're going to cover kind of the next step, which is being able to animate things inside of the Canvas. So with animation, um, there's a lot of different things you, you need to be able to do. I'm going to set up uh, with a basic code template here in Dreamweaver CS5, and then we'll kind of expand upon what's there to add some animation along the way. And, uh, and then we'll circle back and talk about what some other options are for you down the road. All right, let's take a look at Dreamweaver CS5. So here I have a uh, basic kind of animation uh, template set up. Uh, there's lots of different properties and things that we're going to be talking about along the way, but just kind of familiarize yourself uh, with the code. I have a canvas element that I'll be using. Obviously, the context to be able to draw on the uh, canvas itself. And then I have things like um, images. Uh, so we'll be using uh, an X marks the spot to say where we want to start the animation, and an X marks the spot where we're going to finish the animation. And then we'll use the HTML5 logo and animate it from the start point to the end point. So I have uh, variables that represent those images. We've talked about how to use images in a previous episode. And then I have a start and end point, so where we put that X and where we put the, the start X and the stop X that they we're going to animate from and to, we need to track those, because keep in mind that in the terms of the canvas, it's just a flattened bitmap. It doesn't actually think of anything as a start and end point, so we need to keep track of those virtually as objects. And then uh, I, have a, I have a variable called points. What points is going to do is hold uh, the data for the path that we want that image to follow. And in this case, we're going to just do a straight line animation um, in a linear fashion from point A to point B. But we need to keep track of the points we want to actually be able to go across. And then there's an interval. And this really is the trick to animating with Canvas, is to use the set interval functionality in JavaScript to be able to cause a refresh. And every time that interval ticks off, you want to go ahead and hit the canvas, uh, redraw it essentially with all the new properties that have changed since the last iteration uh, taken into effect and uh, re-render that. And if you draw it at a regular enough pace, it looks like something is animating across the screen. What's really happening is that you're drawing everything you need to draw uh, and rendering that and then updating the, the virtual points of where everything's supposed to be, redrawing. Uh, updating, redrawing, updating, redrawing, updating, redrawing, and so on, um, essentially at a very high rate, which creates the illusion of animation. So we'll be using interval, and then I also need to know in terms of index where I'm at and the number of points that I am iterating across in terms of that linear progression. So to kind of give you the basics of what we've got here, I've got those two images loading here. Uh, the X marks the spot for our start and end, and then the logo. Also got a reference to the canvas, and so when the canvas is clicked on, we're going to take some sort of actions. In this case, uh, we're going to say, hey, if the start point is null, the user hasn't actually told us where to start yet, then we're going ahead and clear the uh, stage, uh, the, the canvas space, and then we'll go ahead and create a virtual start reference, the x and y coordinates relative to where the mouse went down inside of the canvas. And then we'll go ahead and use the context.drawImage method to go ahead and draw the X marks the spot at that start point. The next step is then if we are clicking again, then the start, start point will already have been defined, but the end point won't. So we'll say if end is null, then go ahead and establish that virtual end point that we're going to draw to. And then I have one other command in here, and that is go ahead and say, get my points. Get the points that we're going to draw for that path. In this case, again, that's going to be a straight line. And the points, I'm calling a function called interpolate. Interpolate's a custom function that I wrote, uh, in this case, to figure out uh, the points along a path from point A to point B. And it fills in the blanks for us, gives us the points at which we can stop. Uh, so it needs to know the start point, it needs to know the end point, and then it needs to know how many pixels apart we want those points to be. In this case, I've used a default value, or used, or not a default value, but I've used a value of seven. Um, and seven, uh, in kind of experimenting with this particular setup, is what has given me the best refresh rates and kind of the most natural looking animation. So every, every seven pixels, I'll have a new point to, uh, to track to. And then we'll use our context to go ahead and draw that index. Uh, not index like uh, I-N-D-E-X, but index, the end X marks the spot. All right. 
So uh, let's go ahead and see this in action. If I come over here to my live view in Dreamweaver CS5, I click on one spot, we'll get one X. If I click on another spot, we'll get another X. And then if I click again, both of those exist. And so we'll say, hey, go do the animation. So for animation, we'll go ahead and use interval. We'll need to track that. We'll say set interval. We'll put a closure here for this function. And I'm going to uh, hit it every 42 seconds, which is about 24 frames. Uh, I'm sorry, every two, every 42 milliseconds, which is about 24 frames a second. Right, 1,000 divided by 24. It would give you roughly uh, 42, and you can adjust that to fit however you want. So that's my interval. It's set up. It's going to tick along at 40. Every 42 milliseconds, it's going to redraw the canvas. And what do we need to draw? Well, the first thing we need to draw is the original X marks the start point. So let me reach into my snippets here and we'll draw the start X. And let's clean that up here real quick. So there's our start image, or our, our draw image for the start. And then I'll also need to be able to draw the end X. So let's go ahead and put that in there as well. So now I've got those two place markers drawn. Keep in mind, the reason we're doing that is because every refresh, we're going to clear everything off and redraw it uh, and re-render re -render, re -render that to the screen every 42 milliseconds. Um, so if we just clear, cleared it off altogether and didn't think about the start X and the end X, then we wouldn't actually be redrawing those. And so we need to, again, we need to keep track of those as virtual references to be able to draw them uh, consistently throughout the progress of the animation. And then uh, the next thing is actually to draw the logo itself. So let's go ahead and go into my snippets here where we draw the logo. And so you'll notice that this is going to draw that logo image, which we've loaded. And uh, I'm going to use the points array. And then that points, again, is the interpolation, the path of which we're stopping along the, the progress of that animation. And then there's the index, I-N-D-E-X, so the index of that array, where we are in that array, at what point we're drawing. So I get the X and Y coordinates for that, and I'll draw the logo at that point, which means I obviously need to be able to increment the index itself. So let me come down here and increment that. I'll use a snippet for that as well. And So here I'll say index equals index plus one. So increment, go on to the next point on our animation. And we'll say, hey, if index equals points length, essentially for the end of it, for the end of that array, at the end of our animation, then I want to clear the interval. I want to stop refreshing. And just to make sure everything's cleaned up and ready to go again, I'll set interval to null. I'll clean out the points array. I'll clean out uh, the start and end points. And then I'll go ahead and reset the index to zero. And so we put all of that in, in, in line there. And uh, if we go ahead and refresh now, we should click once and get our start point. Click again and get our endpoint, and click again, and we see the HTML5 logo being animated. In this case, I haven't cleared anything, so it actually is just drawing the HTML5 logo in its entirety. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and say context.clear rect 0, 0, 200, 200. So we'll clear the canvas surface. Go ahead and refresh our example here. X, X, and one more time to animate it, and there we go. X, X, and one more time to animate it, and there we go. And so that's the basics of animation. Animation in Canvas is keeping track of your virtual assets that you're going to need to be drawing and where they're at, and then to actually go ahead and iterate um, at your given frame rate, in this case 24 frames a second or about four, every 42 milliseconds, to be able to redraw those assets and move them along the way. I should mention that though there are other libraries out there that do this type of work for you. This is the baseline of what's actually going on underneath the covers. Um, but there are other libraries, so for example, that will do tween uh, type of animations for you. Uh, if you wanted to do things like elastic bouncing or when it gets to the end or uh, cubic uh, acceleration curves or uh, other types of easing in and out so that it starts really fast and slows down when it gets to the end. Those types of libraries with the, out, that, were, that are out there will work for you. Now, you don't want to use, for example, uh, the jQuery animation libraries because keep in mind the jQuery animation library is actually going to be expecting you to manipulate a DOM element. So it's going to want to try to look up a DOM element. But these aren't DOM elements. These are virtual elements. These aren't, uh, these aren't properties uh, that we can manipulate on the DOM element. They're virtual objects that exist in, in the context of what we're rasterizing to the screen. So uh, a lot of the kind of the traditional animation methods when you're working with animating content inside of the canvas itself don't work. Uh, you want to keep track of the elements and then use a tweening library that lets you tween individual properties 
um, of any given object, and it doesn't really care about what that object is and lets you go ahead and define that. The example that um, that I like to use, for example, is JS tweener, um, and that uh, gives me a great basis to use traditional tween methods for objects that are being animated in my Canvas space. So that's getting started with HTML5 uh, Canvas for animation. Uh, we have lots more topics to talk about in the future. Until then, I'm Kevin Hoyt.